This is a treasure chest, but it doesn't contain gold or jewels. Instead, it holds something far more valuable, knowledge. For centuries, scientific knowledge has been like this treasure chest, locked away and only accessible by a privileged few. But what if we could change that? Welcome to the world of the open science movement, a revolutionary approach to how we conduct, share, and access scientific research. At its heart, open science is about transparency. It's about making research methods, findings, and data freely available to everyone. But in order to open this chest of scientific knowledge, we first need four different keys. The first key is open access. This means that scientific knowledge is without a paywall. Think of it like a global library where anybody can come in and out and take whatever papers they need at any time. The next key is open data. So instead of researchers hoarding data on their local hard drives, instead data should be shared along with research papers so that others can validate the methods that they use to analyze that data and even build on the data themselves to extend the findings. The third key is open peer review. So rather than peer review being a somewhat private conversation between the author, the reviewer, and perhaps the journal, instead peer review is done out in the open so that the reviewer is accountable for their comments and the authors are accountable for their responses to the reviewer's comments. And the fourth and final key is open source. This is about researchers sharing the software, tools, and code that they used in order to conduct their research so that others can look at them, learn from them, and even improve on them in the future. By embracing these four keys, we're not only unlocking the chest of scientific knowledge, but we're unlocking the potential for faster, more collaborative, and more transparent scientific research. So today we're gonna to dive deep into the open science movement. We're gonna explore its potential to revolutionize the way that scientific research is done. But just like all revolutions, it's not without its critics. And so in today's video, I'm gonna try and give you a balanced view as to whether or not the open science movement is a good idea. Okay, so the first argument for is increased transparency and reproducibility. And for me, this is like the most obvious and immediate win of the open science movement. We've seen how a lack of transparency when it comes to data and methods has been very problematic in the past. And we've seen that it's allowed a lot of researchers to get away with bad practice, sometimes straight up data fraud. I'm Diederik Stapel. I'm committed to scientific fraud. And they're able to get away with it because they can basically assume that nobody's really going to be reviewing their data. They don't even have to share the data with the paper that they publish. For me, this seems like an immediate win for having open access to data. On the other hand, access to data can pose some privacy and ethical risks, particularly in the field of my domain, social psychology, and of course, medicine. If people's personal data, private data, medical records are all out in public, there is significant potential for people to misuse that data and potentially cause a lot of harm to individuals. With open access to data, this increases collaboration because you can have one scientist propose a way to analyze this data, while another scientist can actually do that analysis in their spare time and you know immediately find a result, see if it works. If it doesn't work, then another scientist can propose a different way of analyzing the data and they can have this very dynamic rapid feedback improvement on how that data is processed and just think about how much better and faster and more collaborative that research process would be and how much more powerful the findings would be as a result of that same data set. We actually see this method of working being extremely effective in the related domain of coding. If any of you have heard of the website Stack Overflow and have done some coding yourself in the past you'll know that that website is incredibly helpful. You simply can pose an extremely technical question on Stack Overflow and then other technical minded people can respond to your question and give you answers. And the real magic of Stack Overflow is that different users can upvote different answers depending on how accurate or useful they think they are. Imagine if scientific research was done in a similar way where a scientist can simply propose a question that they want to find out and then all these different researchers can simply comment on it and upvote each other's answers to see what they think would be the most useful or you know most promising way of investigating that. How much faster and more effective would scientific progress be? Now, on the contrary, some people might argue that if everything is open access and anybody with any qualification can make comments on a specific thing, then that could lead to extremely poor quality control issues. You might have trolls or annoying kids just commenting stupid stuff, and that would just simply muddy the waters of what was legitimate scientific research and what was just silly troll comments. 
However, with that being said, I think we can look at case study examples from the past and we can see that actually collaborative knowledge bases are generally pretty accurate. I've already talked about Stack Overflow and how the upvote system helps to mitigate a lot of those kind of troll comments that just simply wouldn't receive as many upvotes. But also look at something like Wikipedia. Yes, I know Wikipedia isn't a perfectly scientifically accurate platform, but on the whole, Wikipedia is generally very accurate. And if you want to find out about a specific topic, looking at the Wikipedia page, you could probably Probably learn a lot of what was true. And the reason why this works is because if some troll or some person decides to put inaccurate information on the page, then somebody who really cares about accuracy can then just correct them later on. And generally speaking, this leads to a pretty accurate system over time. And so the more people who collaborate to a collaborative system like this, the more accurate it becomes. Not only that, but scientific research tends to be pretty darn niche and specialist and technical. And for that reason, the people who contribute to these kinds of forums will be somewhat self-selecting. They need to have at least some knowledge about what the topic of research is about, and they need to be able to then you know, digest what is being proposed here and offer different solutions. And so it becomes a very self-selecting group who contributes to these blogs, and that should also help to mitigate the effect of trolls and so on. Now, all of this sounds great in theory, but there's just one problem, money. Of course, the reason why the system works the way that it does now is because the incentives for researchers is not to contribute to open science blogs. I'm not the first one to make these arguments. I'm not the first one to suggest that open science might be a good idea. But historically, these have all failed because, well, there's no incentive for researchers to contribute to them. Young researchers are competing for very competitive positions at prestigious universities. And the best way for them to help secure one of those positions is to publish more. And not only publish more, but publish in top high impact journals. And so really they want to be dedicating as much of their time and energy and effort into doing that because that's what's going to help them in their career. Not unfortunately contributing to open science movements, even if they agree that open science is really just a better way for research to be done in general. And this incentive structure has meant that scientific knowledge has been like the locked chest I talked about at the start of this video, locked away and only accessible by a privileged few. But you know what other industry has been only accessible by a privileged few? The contemporary art market. Historically, investing in contemporary art was only accessible by the very rich. People would spare millions of dollars to buy pieces of art like Picasso, Banksy, Basquiat, etc. But Masterworks, the sponsor of today's video, are able to change that. The way they're able to do this is by firstly, of course, buying the pieces of art, then qualifying them with the SEC, and by doing that, they allow you to invest in shares of that art, which you can then add to your portfolio. Masterworks' decades in experience and research has allowed them to pay out over $45 million in net return to investors like you. And so through Masterworks, you're able to participate in the highly exclusive and lucrative contemporary art market without needing millions of dollars, any real knowledge of art, or have any art market connections. So far, Masterworks has had 16 exits, all of which have returned a profit. In fact, Masterworks makes investing in art so easy that over 800,000 people have joined Masterworks so far. Now, because Masterworks is so popular, there is a wait list. But in honor of today's sponsorship, Masterworks are giving my subscribers, you guys, the ability to skip the wait list by using my link in the description. So if you're interested in investing in contemporary art and want to diversify your portfolio in this fun way, then be sure to check out Masterworks, link in the description. Thank you Masterworks for sponsoring today's video. So in the same way that Masterworks has democratized the contemporary art market, the open science movement would democratize knowledge across the world. And this has several benefits in my opinion. So the main benefit in my opinion of the open science movement is that it democratizes scientific research. By making it free to everybody, this has several benefits. Firstly, it would encourage more people to just read scientific papers. Without the paywall in the way, it actually makes it possible and economically viable for you to actually get involved and read research for yourself. At the moment, journals will charge something like $60 or more for just one paper. And imagine if you're writing a paper of your own or you wanna write a, a video essay like how I do here on YouTube, you're really expecting people to pay $60 per paper when they're trying to cite several papers and they don't even know if that paper will be, end up being useful because they can't even read it before they buy it. To me, the system, how it works at the moment is absolutely ridiculous. And not only that, but if it's ridiculous for me as somebody who has a pretty decent job and lives here in London, imagine what it's like for somebody growing up in a third world country. If you're in a third world country, $60 becomes an even more significant amount of your income and just becomes 
completely realistic even if you are highly motivated to get that. So in a way, by hiding scientific research behind this expensive paywall, it almost acts like a regressive tax towards the poorest people in our global economy. So in my opinion, the open science movement would actually democratize this in a way that would be very beneficial for society. It might even improve inequality in a way because now the poorest people in the world can actually access scientific knowledge. And even beyond inequality, I think that democratizing scientific knowledge in this way would just improve people's trust in science. Science. It's no secret that right now, trust in the scientific method is kind of at an all-time low. In fact, I'm sure many of you guys who have been watching my channel and subscribing recently are people who fall into this camp. After all, I've been covering scientific fraud and all the flaws in the academic system, so I'm sure some of you are watching that because, well, you have this belief that the scientific method is broken. But what if you were able to read research papers for yourself? People talking about doing their own research, but you can't even do that right now because it's so expensive. So I'm keen to hear what you guys think. What do you think of the open science movement. If you had access to papers, would that improve your trust in science? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you guys so much for watching today's video and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.